Hey everybody, uh, here's going to be a JASP tutorial on multiple regression with Ahi Sushi. So uh, what I've done here is uh, uh, I'll share my screen with you. Um, I've uh, uh, uploaded a, a data set here on a stat exam scores and we have a variety of variables here, math aptitude test, English aptitude test, uh, English GPA, math GPA, and we're going to use uh, the stat exam score as our criterion variable and uh, uh, look at English aptitude and math aptitude in terms of uh, predicting stat exam scores. So uh, let's prepare our ahi sushi. What I've done here is I've uh, uh, gotten a, 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 a tuna here. Uh, I, I uh, seasoned it with some uh, garlic pepper seasoning. And uh, we're just going to go over here and uh, uh, spray some pan in a pan. So uh, there we go. And uh, uh, go ahead and heat this up. There we go. And as that's heating, um, let's uh, uh, let's look at our, uh, our our data set here. So once again, um, I will share my screen. Here we go. And uh, you can see this data set here. Um, we're going to go to uh, regression, linear regression. And our criterion variable will be stat exam scores. And our uh, predictor will be math aptitude and English aptitude. Now, I know it's real tempting to already start looking at the results and see what we have here. Um, and uh, before we do that, um, let's uh, look at our model assumptions. So um, we're going to go and the first thing we want to do is we want to look at our linearity. We can do that by looking at partial plots. And that's going to produce uh, plots of our pre each predictor variable on the criterion variable. It'll also look at our predict. It, yeah, yeah, and so, and so we can see uh, that there appears to be a linear relationship between math scores and stat exam scores, and between English, it's less strong, you know, it's a little weaker. So we can also uh, look at uh, homoscedacity by uh, plotting our uh, residuals uh, and predicted. Um, and so you can see here, that the, the error variance appears to be, you know, rather consistent. I'm not noticing a, 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 a cone in the pattern of the data that would lead me to think that there is a, a heteroscedacity. And um, finally, we can look at the normality of our uh, error um, uh, or our residuals, and we can see that they're fairly normally distributed. We have a, uh, uh, a few outliers here. And we can even, I'll even show you where to find those outliers. But first, um, let's uh, stop for a moment and put our uh, tuna on. And so here I'm just going to uh, uh, take our tuna. It's going to sit for about two minutes per side. So uh, while that's going right here. So let's uh, uh, once again share the screen and uh, start with uh, uh, looking at uh, some some statistics here. So we're going to um, look at our descriptives. We're going to run part and partial correlations, uh, our collinearity diagnostics. We can also analyze uh, any outliers. We can uh, get some uh, uh, statistics on, 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 uh, uh, on error variances and look at case-wise diagnostics. Um, here, it, it's going to say standardized residuals greater than three. I like to put it at two standard deviations instead. And, uh, uh, and, um, and, and, and so when we're looking at uh, the, the error variances, we can see that, yeah, we do have some, um, some outliers here, some standardized residuals, a minimum value of negative 2.2. Uh, on the higher value, we're within two standard deviations. Um, and we even can tell what cases uh, appear to be problematic here, case 12 and 92. 
if my sample size was small, I might consider eliminating those outliers and running a cleaner data set. But for right now, I think we're okay. Um, so let's look at our results. So um, we have about 30 seconds to look at our results, but we can see that we have a statistically significant model. And uh, approaching a large effect size, almost 26% of the variance accounted for, 25.5% of the variance accounted for. And so uh, let's pause for a second here before we look at uh, how each predictor variable is contributing. And let's flip our tuna. There we go. All right. And it's uh, getting nice there. All right. We're going to keep that on for about another two minutes here. And uh, once again, share my screen. And, uh, and, and so here we are. Once again, we're going to look at uh, the contribution of each predictor variable. I'll make this a little bigger for you all to see. So uh, take a look here at the t-test for uh, math and we can see that it is a statistically significant predictor. Uh, English aptitude was not. It was not a statistically significant predictor. We don't appear to have a multicollinearity issue. If we did, th these values here would be greater than five. So what is the contribution of math and English aptitude? Well, we can find that out um, by, uh, by looking at our part and partial correlations. So, and I'm trying to see where, here, here we are. And so what we can do here is we take this part correlation and really what this part correlation is, is a semi-partial correlation. When we square these values, we know the unique contribution of each predictor variable. So, take for example, um, 0.463 that we see here. When I square that, uh, I have 21% of the variance accounted for uniquely by math aptitude. So of that about 25.5% of the variance accounted for, 21.4 comes from math aptitude. And you'll be able to see that English aptitude doesn't account for much. It's 0.145. And when we square that value here, um, it's about 2% of the unique contribution uh, accounted for. So um, we can see that math aptitude is, is, is the greater contributor uh, to this. So uh, that's been about two minutes. Let's um, look at our, uh, our, our ahi sushi here. So uh, we can see here uh, that it looks about done. I'm gonna bring it over to a plate here take this, uh, turn this off, yeah, and uh, have a little knife here, there we go, and uh, bringing this over here, looks, looks, uh, looks pretty good, looks pretty good, we're going to cut this open, and uh, show this to you, what, it, uh, uh, what, what our final product looks like here, so we can uh, uh, slice this, uh, uh, I, I like to slice this cross grain, and, and, uh, Let's get a fork. That would be easier to kind of hold everything in place. And uh, yeah, it's still a little rare. Maybe I overdid it a little bit, but uh, still um, looks delicious. Um, and uh, uh, you can serve this with some brown rice, or uh, I like to have mine with kimchi. So hope uh, you got something out of this tutorial, multiple regression with ahi sushi. And uh, I'll talk with you later.